Today's video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about flash hole deburring tools. I know, exciting, right? <laughs> uh, people reload for different reasons. Uh, some folks reload to save money uh, on ammunition. Uh, other folks, like myself, reload to try to eke out as, as much precision as we can out of each cartridge. And in my opinion, in order to get that precision uh, and smaller group sizes, is to make each cartridge as identical to the next cartridge as, as humanly possible. So uh, whether it's the trim length, the bullet seating depth, the head space, uh, whatever it is, uh, if I can get each cartridge identical, uh, I feel I can get better groups out of those cartridges. And that includes the flash hole that is down there at the bottom of the primer pocket. Now, Sammy specifications for the flash holes for a rifle cartridge that takes a large primer, the flash hole should be 0 0.078 inches to 0 0.082 inches in diameter. Uh, for rifle cartridges that take a small primer, the diameter of the flash hole should be 0 0.074 inches to 0 0.078 inches. Okay, just a little bit uh, smaller. Now, during the manufacture of a case, uh, a number of, of things can go wrong uh, with the flash hole. It could be off-center, uh, you know, from case to case. Each, each flash hole may not be exactly centered. Uh, some may have uh, little burrs, uh, either on the inside or on the rim of the flash hole, which would effectively change the shape of the flash hole. Uh, and they could be different diameter from case to case. So the flash hole deburr tools can either correct or detect each of those three issues with a flash hole that would make them not, uh, not the same or not consistent. Now all flash hole deburring tools are, are very similar. Uh, they all consist of a shaft. At one end of the shaft is a cutting tool. At the other end of the shaft is a mechanism of some sort for either mounting it to a handle or uh, a power device of some sort. And they have some mechanism for indexing the case, uh, either in or out, um, uh, so that you get the uh, right amount of, uh, of cut uh, without taking too much material off of the uh, flash hole itself. Now, the indexing device here, there, there's a couple, a few ways to do it. Uh, one is with a bushing, uh, bushing style uh, cutter. There's also a universal style, which is this cone shape that you see here. Uh, and there's, we'll talk about the 21st century tool here shortly. Uh, it does things a little bit differently. With the universal style cutting tool, uh, it doesn't matter what caliber case you're going to use it with. Uh, the the uh, diagonal or the cone-shaped indexing piece here will fit uh, regardless of the caliber. Uh, the, the case neck will meet the cone here at some point on the cone. So it doesn't really matter what caliber it is. With a bushing style uh, flash hole cutter, you have uh, the cutter with a, a shaft and the cutting uh, piece at one end. This one's uh, on a handle. And you would need to get the appropriate bushing for the caliber that you're using. Now this is a 30 caliber bushing and it fits over the shaft like that and then the bushing itself then would go into the uh, mouth of the case like like so. Now, so with the bushing style you have to have the appropriate bushing for whatever caliber you're using. With the universal style you just have this cone shape uh, device here and it'll uh, fit any any uh, uh, caliber. Now, 
the purpose for that, if we look at the cutter head here, we have the tip of the cutter, and that basically is what goes in into the flash hole and deburs the flash hole, any any uh, uh, pieces of uh, any burrs or whatnot uh, inside the flash hole get cut out by that. This also will uh, make sure that your flash hole is the appropriate size. Now most cutters have a tip that is 0 0.078 inches in diameter. Uh, now if you remember with the cartridge or cases that use the large primer, the size or semi size is from 0.78 inches to 0.82 inches. So 0.070 or 0 0.078 rather, it would be on the low end of the flash hole size for a large primer case. Small primer case uh, goes from 0 0.074 inches to 0 0.078 inches. So a 0 0.078 inch uh, head on the cutting tool will be on the high end of the uh, small primer case. Now, in my mind, the actual measurement of the hole itself isn't as important as the fact that each case has the same size hole. So uh, by using a 0 0.078 inch cutter, that'll make sure that not only am I within STAMI standards uh, for either small primer or large primer cases, but it'll also make sure that my uh, flash hole is at least 0 0.078 inches uh, on all of my cartridges. Now, most cutter tips on uh, flash hole deburr, uh, deburr tools right below the tip then have this angled section right here. And that angled section will deburr the rim of the flash hole on the inside uh, and can also provide a little uh, kind of a radius uh, edge to the inside of the uh, flash hole inside the case. Now, the fact that that angled uh, cutter is there means that if you push it in too far you may cut more material off the inside of the flash hole than you want it to. Uh, the idea here is we want everything to be uniform. We want everybody to, to have the same uh, the same size flash hole without cutting you know more material off of one and less material off another. That's what the indexing piece is for. If I take my this is a 3030 Winchester case. I put it in and I insert the tip of the flash hole cutter into the flash hole. And what I can do is take the cone shaped piece here and put that up against the case mouth. And then I would tighten that down. Uh, that way, let's tighten that down here. That way, I know that the cutter will go in the same amount on every case that I use it on, okay? Uh, that is, of course, assuming that my cases have been trimmed and they are all the same length. If I have some cases that are shorter, this is going to go in further on those cases. Uh, a longer case, it won't go in as far, so that angled piece on the cutter it's either going to cut more uh, of the flash hole or less, depending on whether the case is long or short. So if you're going to use this kind of uh, indexing mechanism, uh, you want to make sure that your cases are all trimmed uh, prior to uh, uh, using the, the, the tool to uh, deburr the flash hole. Okay. Now, you'll notice that I've had you know, a little bit of trouble on some of these to try to get the tool into the flash hole, okay? That's because, you know, the, the, the tool goes in and it kind of, you know, can go back and forth, move around inside the, uh, the case, and I have to kind of feel for the flash hole until it finally goes in, okay? That's the problem with using the universal style flash hole deburr tool. With a bushing style, since the bushing is uh, exactly the right size for the case mouth, 
it will prevent the tool from jiggling around like that. It'll it'll guide the tool straight into the case and that'll guide the cutting tool uh, straight into the flash hole. So let me go ahead, it's just the same way. I'll put the end of the tool into the flash hole. And then I'll insert the bushing until it comes up against the case mouth. And then I'll tighten that down. Okay. Now, not only do I have it indexed so that it goes in the same amount on each case, assuming each case is trimmed to the same amount, but it will also guide the tool directly into the flash hole because it's this uh, bushing here now kind of keeps that the, the cartridge or the case straight and it goes right into the flash hole. I don't have to kind of hunt for it because the, the tool won't jiggle around in there. It, it'll uh, go straight right in and the tip goes right into the flash hole. Uh, for that reason, uh, the universal style flash hole deburr tool isn't really recommended for a powered tool, like if you're using a case prep center or uh, an RCBS or Lyman uh, case prep center that with the, the powered uh, uh, devices uh, where you can take an 832 threaded tool, screw that in, and then, you know, it'll turn the tool for you and you put the, the case on. With, with the uh, universal, it's kind of hard to get the uh, tip of the cutter into the flash hole on a power device. Whereas if you had a bushing style deburr tool on a power device, it's a whole lot easier uh, to use because the, 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 it guides it directly into the flash hole. So uh, if you're going to use a power device, you probably want to use a bushing style uh, deburr tool. Now, these are this is a Sinclair bushing style deburr tool. I also have the Sinclair Universal style deburr tool and it has the cone uh, just like the uh, uh, Hornady or, or Lyman uh, deburr tools would have. The problem with the Sinclair tools is that they are not threaded on this end for 832. So if you have like a, a RCBS, Lyman or Hornady powered case prep center you can't really attach this to uh, uh, a power device like that. Same thing for the uh, the uh, bushing style from Sinclair. Now you could probably you know fit it into the chuck of a drill although uh, I don't uh, I don't recommend using a drill for this kind of thing. The Hornady, Lyman and RCBS uh, universal and bushing style tools uh, do have the uh, 832 threading on the end so you can actually put those into a a tool. Now the uh, Hornady and Lyman as far as I know only have the universal tool. RCBS does have a uh, bushing style tool. It, it does have the 832 threading on the end. Uh, you can get the RCBS bushings uh, the RCBS bushings, by the way, also fit on the Sinclair, uh, whereas the RCBS bushings do not fit on the Lyman or the Hornady uh, Universals. Otherwise, you could buy a Universal and then just switch out the the uh, Universal cone-shaped thing here for the uh, for a bushing. But alas, the bushing doesn't fit. So uh, RCBS does have a. Uh, bushing style tool like this that the bushings fit on and you can put it into a power uh, a power uh, case prep center. Uh, so Hornady and Lyman uh, only have the universal. RCBS has the universal and the bushing style and are able to be powered. 
Sinclair has the universal and bushing style, but are not set up for power use. Now, the 21st century deburr tool is a little different than the others. Uh, it, you know, again, it has a shaft for, uh, and at one end of the shaft it has the deburr tool. But you'll notice on this one, it doesn't have the angular, or the angled part of the cutter. It's just a 90 degree cutter here. It has the uh, 0.078 inch uh, tip and it comes straight down and, and has this uh, flat area here which also has a cutter on it. Uh, it also has a bushing. The bushing's a little different. It's a, it's a much longer bushing. Uh, the bushing on the 21st century tool is also beveled. Uh, whereas the bushing on the RCBS and the Sinclair is kind of a 90 degree cut here. Uh, so it uh, it's a lot easier to guide this bushing into a case than it is with the Sinclair RCBS. And that also makes it easier for the 21st century tool to be used with a sized case because a, a sized case may be a little bit less than uh, 30 cal. Um, and it may be difficult to get this, this squared off uh, bushing into a sized 30 cal case, whereas the beveled uh, bushing with the 21st century makes it a whole lot easier to do that. Now, you'll notice that the 21st century case doesn't have, uh, or doesn't appear to have, uh, any way to index uh, the case. Well, the fact that this has a squared off cutter at the top here uh, means that it's, it can be indexed to the webbing or the, the floor of the uh, case itself. So when you put the, the cutter in, it'll only go in uh, so far and, it, and it'll stop at that point. It won't, uh, uh, won't go in any further. It doesn't uh, radius the, the rim. Uh, of the uh, inside of the flash hole. It just uh, makes sure your flash hole is the right size and it uh, deburs the inside of the flash hole. It'll also deburr the outside of the flash hole but doesn't put a radius rim on there. That's really the only uh, uh, the only thing that it doesn't do. But the nice thing about this is it doesn't matter what size your, your what your trim length is on your cases. So you can take untrimmed cases and use the 21st century tool and not have to worry about uh, whether or not you're, you're cutting too much material off or not because it doesn't have that angled piece on there and doesn't need to be indexed to a trimmed case. Another nice thing about the 21st century tool is that it comes with this uh, uh, quarter inch shank on the end here. So if you wanted to use, say, a, uh, a battery powered screwdriver, fits in there nicely so you can use that uh, on a powered uh, you know, on a powered environment and it goes very quick. You can uh, very quickly deburr your flash holes with a screwdriver or a battery powered uh, screwdriver. Now the shank comes off screws off and underneath is an 832 threaded piece here. So uh, if you have like an RCBS, Hornady, or Lyman uh, power case prep center, you can still use this in, in those in, because they, it's a standard threading, 832, and it will fit into a powered uh, device uh, like the Lyman or RCBS or Hornady. So it gives you a lot of options. You can also take this piece really since it's 832 threaded uh, and you know, put a different kind of tool on there. I can put a brush on there and uh, use my brush then in my battery powered screwdriver. So it's uh, had a lot of advantages, the 21st century tool. Doesn't matter what, so, you know, whether your cases are trimmed or not, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, 
uh, whether you're going to use a battery powered uh, screwdriver or a power uh, case center or if you want you can uh, put a handle on it. Again those handles are threaded for 832 and they fit just fine on the 21st century tool. Okay. So 21st century tool has, a, has several advantages as far as a uh, uh, flash hole deburr tool. The downside of the 21st century tool is that they're 30 bucks a piece and you have to have one for every caliber that you're reloading. Uh, I have three of them. I have one for uh, 338, one for 30 cal and one for uh, 22 cal. Now you would think uh, that you could buy one complete one for 30 bucks and then just buy different bushings. Uh, but I've looked at their website and apparently they don't sell them that way. Uh, so I can't, can't really do that. Uh, it would be a lot cheaper if I, all I had to do was buy a bushing and then replace the bushing uh, on the same shaft since the cutter is basically the same size. Although 21st Century does sell some of the smaller uh, bushings, so you can you can get large or small, uh, um, not bushings, but uh, cutters uh, with theirs. So depending on what caliber you're using, uh, you may or may not want to get a smaller uh, smaller cutter. So 21st Century tool is a little different than the Sinclair, the RCBS, Hornady, and, and so on uh, cutters. Uh, they have some advantages. The only disadvantage I find is that they're relatively expensive. But if you don't mind the expense, it uh, might be the way to go for it. Okay. And that's basically what there is to know about uh, flash hole uh, deburr tools. Uh, oh, one thing I'm, I forgot to mention. Uh, we talked about the fact that the uh, flash hole may not be centered. Well, when you're using a bushing style deburr tool, if you put it in and the cutter doesn't go into the hole, that hole may be off center. Now you can't really correct it with the deburr tool, but you can at least detect that you have cases with the uh, flash hole off center. And what I do when I run into that is I'll take that case and I'll put it into a batch uh, of cases that I use uh, for plinking or, or th for non-precision loads, uh, whereas with my match grade stuff I want, I want my uh, flash holes to be centered because I want, I want as much consistency from case to case as humanly possible. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If so, please click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and happy reloading.